This is part 8, Texturing the Gun in Body Paint, Photoshop, and 3D Studio Max. I'm Ben Mathis, and my website is www.poopinmymouth.com. So the first thing I do is uh, take the model into body paint, and uh, I've already laid out the colors and I started on the handle grip. Um, so I'm, I'm laying out my UVs in a, in a map that I can, so I can see where the geometry is. And then I'm alternating between Photoshop and body paint to block in the initial lighting. So I've just got my flat gray value, which is the color of the metal. And then I've picked this uh, lighter desaturated blue to be the light planes. And I'm just going in and filling in all the areas that I think uh, would be receiving light in uh, on this gun to define the volume of it so that you can see you know which parts face up which parts face down so I'm being kind of rough in body paint because it uh you know it's 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 not as accurate in doing s straight left and right and straight up and down lines as photoshop so I'm just kind of roughing in the the base volume and I like being able to paint in the 3D and the flat view so this is both body paint um now I'm back in photoshop um, and I'm using uh, vector-based lines, which body paint kills each time you bring it back, so I have to keep um, adding it back in. But now I'm using holding down the shift key so that I can constrain the brush to only one axis of movement, and I'm just kind of cleaning up the initial values I laid down in body paint, just sharpening them up so that everything reads well. And then I'm tabbing back into Max to check my results. So my goal is to just be able to show the turning of the forms. Anything that I've got this uh, imaginary light source that I'm uh, painting with where the light is kind of above and to the front of it. So anything that any surface that faces that imaginary light source is um, going to be lightened. So now I'm adding some kind of fake geometry. I wanted some ridges on the top of the, on the, top of the gun and then turning edges to make it work best. So now I'm picking my dark color. And adding that to any of the planes that would be turning away from my imaginary light source. So I'm just checking periodically in Max to make sure that the thing reads correctly. I've got the uh, model set to full 100% illumination, so I'm only looking at the the texture that I've added so far. And this is not the same way I would be painting this as if this was for a normal map. This is definitely a uh, current gen, um, like meant for the Xbox or the PS2. No, no normal maps. I would not paint as uh, much lighting. So now I'm uh, just quick global illumination pass. So I rendered that, opened it, and now I'm overlaying it on my model. And I'm checking the different layer blending effects. I spread the pixels out. So now I've got a little bit of uh, global illumination uh, added on top of the model to show off the lighting a little bit, or show off the form a little better. So now I'm using uh, Lasso Select and I'm using the gradient tool where it's only using one color and uh, transparency. So it doesn't overwrite uh, everything. It just adds in that slow gradient. So this is to kind of imply the slightly reflective nature that, uh, that gun metal ha would have. So I've picked this light color and I'm just dragging these um, small gradients across the surface anywhere that there's... Uh, um, you know, when, when I, I confine it with the lasso select tool and the marquee tool so that it only happens on the planes where I'm trying to put it. So now I'm just going in and trying to tighten up some of the, uh, the areas, adding some highlights to really try and make the different, the small edges read well. 
So this color is slightly lighter than the uh, the light plane color because it's supposed to imply, uh, or actually it's the exact as the uh, light plane color. I'm just kind of spreading out some of the edges and hitting some of the smaller edges um, and then cleaning up some of the GI bake so that it will, so none of the seams show. So now I'm back in max. And I've added the a vector back. So now I'm using a dark gradient to kind of show the, um, to really try and show the reflective nature of the gun. So I've got both uh, dark ones and light gradients on the different planes to really, uh, it, I, I felt like it helped show more of the, the surface the gun was supposed to be made out of. So now I've added a noise and I'm using the sponge effect to kind of try and I want to work up the metal look. So I'm playing with the blending modes and uh, playing with the levels of them so that they read well. Now I'm adding noise again and I'm leaving this one as just a noise and backing it off. I wanted it to just have a little bit of a kind of a sparkle look to it. And then I'm doing the sponge again so that this way I can have like two levels of texture. I'm using color balance to, to colorize the darks versus lights of the sponge texture. So now it feels, I feel like it has more of kind of like a metal texture to it. And I'm been, I'll be playing with the transparency of that layer and my lighting as I go. So now I'm using a brighter color for the highlights and I'm realizing that uh, this is going to be uh, too much, so I'm just kind of hitting all of the edges really brightly, even though it doesn't quite look right, and I know I'm going to go back later when all of them have been hit and play with uh, blurring this layer and changing the transparency mode. So right now it's just it's, it's too much uh, color and value all over, but I'm just making sure that I can hit all of the places that I know I'm going to want to get. And this is to just kind of pull the forms out even more so that they read uh, read better from a distance. And body paint makes a really good, um, just being able to paint in 3D is, is, you know, it's changed the way I've, I do my texturing, um, but it also just helps me to really see you know, where the light would be hitting if this was a light source, because I'm looking at it on the actual model and not in a flattened out view. So I'm just hitting all the major edges that are kind of on the top portion, and now I'm going in in Photoshop and blurring them. sharpening up the, these ones on the edges. So now I'm uh, blurring them and uh, changing up, you know, the, the value or the amount of um, the color in them, playing with levels. I'm just trying to really back it off to where it's still readable, but it doesn't kind of uh, overwhelm all the other areas. So just playing constantly with the levels, making it to where it's uh, at the right level of readability versus too strong. So that was kind of my the settings that I liked, and now I'm going in and darkening more areas. Just picking out different edges so that they read a little better. I wanted to colorize the shadows to be a little bit stronger color, so I went in and just selected all the darks and colorized those a bit more. So 
So now I'm picking a really bright highlight, and this one I'm only going to hit a couple of areas to really help the, uh, the highlights read well, or to really help the edges read well. So these, are, these ones are not just for pulling out all edges. They're only for pulling out specific ones so that it feels like a very shiny, highly reflective gun. And this is on a hard light layer because I like how um, the brightest spots end up being kind of white, but then the transition between the highlight and the underlying layer ends up getting a little bit of the color that you're actually using. So it behaves a bit more like the specular on a real metal wood. But with the, the way this thing behaves, it's very important that you only hit very sharp, very tight highlights. And you can kind of see in Max how this, and then I, I found out that this, you know, those highlights that I laid down were a bit too thick, so that's why I went in and erased some. But you can see in Max now these sharp highlights are starting to help it feel and read more like a, a, a you know, highly reflective metal or a highly specular metal. So I'm just constantly checking in the viewport because that's, you know, that's what matters about having the gun read well. So sometimes even though it's an edge that might, I think that it needs a highlight, then when I actually check it in the viewport, it just doesn't look quite right. So I'll back it off or, you know, add more somewhere else. This was also one of my first um, like flat metal guns to be painting, so I was learning a lot through the whole process. That's why a lot of my um, methods were kind of all over the place where I'm doing lots of transparencies and adjustments afterwards because I'm just trying out seeing what's working well. You know, if something works really well, then I'll go in and try and amplify that effect. So I check the gun upside down, I check it in the position on the model it's going to go to make sure that it's reading well. So I liked how these highlights were coming out, but I also remembered I had a yellow underlight on the handle grip. So I wanted to add that into the gun too. And by having two different colors, you are able to show like what's up versus what's down and then still hit edges and define details on the underside that if you only had one direction of lighting, uh, you those areas would just be in shadow. But by having a separate color, it doesn't really confuse the viewer's eye as if it's a, some kind of light, you know, shining from multiple directions. So right now this, I, again, I'm doing it too bright and too strong, knowing that I'm going to back off the layer and maybe blur some when I'm done. But I just want to be able to see it right now. So that's why it's a bit uh, harder and stronger than it should be. And then the uh, that wireframe I'm hiding with Control H is show hide extras. So there there was now blurring and backing off of that layer some, checking to make sure it reads well. So then I also wanted to add another um, level of um, gradient on the front of the gun to really try and make it read as like the most important, like draw your eyes to the tip of the gun. So I just didn't want too many areas that went to total black. Checking it from all the angles. And then I just added the uh, the GI bake one more time to just kind of play with making sure the things, you know, read well in the shape. 